This is the second video of mixer routing. The first video talked about the PV10 and how it can be set up and the mixer routing and that. That's not really that complicated by looking at it. This video explains about the Zenix 1622FX Behringer mixer, which uh, every mixer is different. So that's why I'm doing a two part video. So one's about one mixer and another's about another mixer. Because in general, they do the same thing audio mixing, right? But this is about audio routing and, and stuff on how to set up your mixers and what you can have a look at. So, you want to have a good look at your mixer when you get it. And I'm going to, you know, looking at this here. It's got a lot more features than the PV10 did. Plus, this is already hooked up because this is my main mixer that I use. So, first of all, there's some differences between the first one and the second one. The first one had a gain control. But there's no gain controls on here. There is, but they're labeled as trim. This is your gain control. The other difference with this mixer is, is that it has a frequency controls on the mono XLR channels, which controls the tone in the mid-range. So you have better things like um, if, let's say, somebody's talking with their voice, you'd have the frequency more to 1.7K things like that. But generally it's the same as the other mixer, high, mid, and low. And if you don't understand about this other mixer, the PV10 here, this is the first video I talked about. The video that we're on right now that you're watching is about the second mixer. So go back and see the first one if you haven't already done so and then have a look at part two here. Notice that this one has four stereo channels and these are all line levels by default. So there is no trim or gain control, it's just either minus 10 decibel or plus 4 decibel gain. And for line levels you want to have it either pushed out or if you really want to give it a little push without distortion is push them in. If it does get distorted you'd have to deselect them. It's not like these channels where you have your trim controls. With my microphone here I have the MXL 980 condenser mic which requires phantom power. And on the back there's a phantom power switch right next to the power as well as I have sub outputs and control room outputs and channel inserts and uh, main output XLRs on the back. You want to have a good look at your mixer. For this I have my gain up about three quarters of the way and this is half. This is my Skype channel. This comes from my computer. So basically I have uh, the low cut the low cut should actually be on 75 hertz, which means it cuts the frequencies below that, which is what you want for microphones, especially condenser mics. My trim control is set. Come down here, my EQ. Now, with the mixer, here's the difference at the bottom between the PV10. This has selectors. You can see there's a mute button. When the, it's yellow, it's muted. You got solo, sub, and main. What this allows you to do is route where you want this to go after this fader. For instance, I want it to go to my main mix, which is right here, and then out to a live audience or stream. Or I can have it go to your su a sub output, which could be a second mixer or some other thing. And even with these sub sends, left and right, which is one and two is stereo, or you can select mono by panning, you can have it go from sub and with these you can select if you want them to go to your main so you can have vocals all on your sub and then everything else go to your main some mixers have more than one sub send some of them have four or six but I have the option to select both so let's say I have two mixes going out one's some sort of live thing and one's a recording thing and I want this channel to be on the live out and I want this to be going to the recording device so I just select these in and then you have a solo button that allows you basically when the solo is off right now I got two on your main mix goes through your headphones or whatever your source is selected you have main which goes by your main slider here sub one two which is your sub sense and your tape control as well as this goes to the main you can have all three selected so it'll mix the, the main mix, the subs, and the CD tape together into your headphones. 
which is also your control room output. The control room output on this mixer is, is, is the volume is right here. So, and the same with the headphone out. So what you'd want to do is, let's say you have your mix going on that, but you want to listen to one channel on its own. And you want to leave it how it's set. Well, you can just press the solo button, and it cuts all the other channels except for that solo. Or if you want to do a combination, like I have uh, 7, 8, here and 910 are soloed so I'm listening to those channels through my headphones or control room and I want to solo my microphone so I'm just getting channel 1, 7, 8 and 9 and 10 or if I just want to do a single one let's say channel 4 I can press solo now you gotta make sure you have either sub or main selected on this mixer to send that channel to the sub or the main or else you're not going to get any audio from your main mix. You're going to wonder what's going on. I set my trim controls and everything. But also remember, you can have the sub also send to the main from here. So it's like a, a send before the main. Which uh, you can do vocals, things like that, mix it in. As well as your auxiliary send is like a monitor send. And this has its own built-in effects, just like the other mixer does. And that goes by this, but you can also bypass that and put your own in. This is a mixer where you want some extra routing. Like I said, if you wanted to have a main mix to some live thing or whatever you choose, and then another send to some sort of recording thing. So you can have certain channels send to your main live mix or your main mix while other channels are sent to your sub send, as well as being able to listen through your headphones privately on individual channels. And you have things like uh, solo and PFL. Solo goes by the slider and it's stereo. As well as um, PFLs if you want to set your gain controls for up here, which means that it goes from this and then to your headphones. Sometimes it gets a little loud, but that's if you want to set your gain controls. The PFL. So, uh,. When you select it on this mixer, the main solo comes on. It's telling you that there's a main solo because you might have something going on with your mix and your headphones might be on. And then you're like, well, I can't hear that channel or something. I'm only hearing one thing. Uh, is it broken? What? You just look, oh, I have a main solo going. So then you want to look for the red light or a couple of red lights you might have going. And then you can hear what's going through your main mix. The other thing about this is you have a pre and post button for your auxiliary so if I press pre in it's gonna have its own control separate than this slider which is good for monitors if I deselect it it's gonna be post which means it's gonna go by this slider volume so if you have monitors hooked up and these go to your main or your subs it's gonna go by this volume and pre will bypass that so it's its own volume separate from this so yeah hopefully it's not too overwhelming like I said in the other video if you're having problems or don't really understand you can leave a comment below or send me a message I'd be happy to help And if you like our videos hit the subscribe button I love technology especially sound it's pretty awesome Check out our website at macintech.net. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash macintech. And our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash macintech. Any questions, comments, you can send them to questions at macintech.net. Or like I said, send me a message on YouTube. Or leave a comment below in the comment area. This has been the second video of the first video of audio mixer routing.